It was just something that I naturally did because I liked the music that I was listening to when I was young. That music was uh, rhythm and blues from the 50s and kind of what was just before doo-wop. It would have probably later on be called doo-wop. The thing that was great about it was that most of the songs from that era were all written to the same chord structures. So I'll give you an example. Will you be mine, my darling dear? Love you all the time. I'm just a fool, a fool in love with you. That's Earth Angel. Probably the most famous of the uh, songs from the from the the groups of the 50s. And uh, so my dad was a professional musician. He was a bass player. So I asked him, would he teach me the chords to, the, to, you know, to these songs, which you know, he said, yeah, they're all the same chords, you know? <laughs> and so the first song I wrote was, the girl for me is standing there. That's the one, flowers in her hair. I'll always love her, and I know she'll be true. You get the point. <laughs> well, the songwriter that I am now is very, very different from the songwriter that I was even in the 70s, and that writing was different from what I wrote in the 60s for Simon and Garfunkel, and before that, when I was doing imitation of teenage stuff, that was, that was another way. Then I just wrote the songs. I didn't, there was no need to separate the music from the words. They all came at the same time. Also, when you're young and uh, you're writing, there's really no problem with the words because you don't know anything. So <laughs> whatever you say is fine because you don't know anything. You know, later on you say, oh, I can't say that. That isn't exactly true. So things become more sophisticated as our brains become more sophisticated and attuned to irony and to uh, uh, the yin and yang of everything. And if your life, if your professional life is as a songwriter, you begin to incorporate these concepts into your thinking. And when I started to do that, I found that simply playing the guitar and improvising over it, like, look, this is the way most songs begin when people begin playing, okay? They go. Well, I'm just here and I don't know what to say now. So I'll talk about the girl who I love, who doesn't exist. Uh, well, that's why I wrote a lot of hits in the beginning. And now I can't write one for, you know, for anything. The, the big change came with Graceland. Even before I, you know, went to South Africa and even before I fell in love with South African music, I really felt like I don't want to go into the studio and have a song where the track isn't equal to the song. So one of the famous songs on Graceland is called uh, The Boy in the Bubble. So that was recorded with, uh, with an accordion player who came from the little, a little country within South Africa, a country called Lesotho. And he played a certain kind of certain kind of music, a Sutu music, and that was the boy in the bubble. In that session, you know, we just let the tape roll, really. So one of the tracks that existed there, I, he, that he played on, I said, uh, you know what, the, I don't really like the, I don't really want the accordion on it. The only thing I really like on this track are the drums. So let's just keep the drums. So 
we have, we have that track. I can show you. So this is the track that was recorded on the, on the same day I recorded Boy in the Bubble, the day before I recorded Graceland, where I said, all I want are the drums. So here's the, here's the accordion track. Now the next day, a group of musicians come in and I say to the guitarist, to the gifted guitarist, I say, I have a drum track that I like. What would you play to this drum track? So he hears the drum track and he says, it sounds like American country music to me, which is probably why I liked it. So you know what? Please play what we just heard and then go directly into the Graceland track. Pretty good. Yeah, it does. So here's what happened. This is, this is, I think, the most extraordinary moment in the whole making of that album. The guitarist, his name is Ray Peary, and he's playing his this stuff in the key of E. And, and then he does something that's really quite amazing in the context of South Africa. You have to know South African music is three chords in a major key. They never play a minor chord. You know, I shouldn't say never because I'm sure there's some, but most South African music is that. So he plays, plays that and then he goes. And I say, whoa, Ray. Why did you play that chord? It's the first time I hear anybody play a minor chord, a relative minor. He's playing the, in the key of E, he's playing a C-sharp minor. So he says, because that's the chord that you play, I heard you play that, the, those chords. Well, of course, I learned that sequence of chords from Earth Angel. You know? <laughs> so here's Ray, who's you know, playing what what he thinks is American country and adding a chord structure that he knows from my music to a beat that came from an accordion track that had nothing to do with this. And then when he gets to the chorus, he goes into a kind of African blues. So, I mean, what we have here really is world music. It's really people doing what they heard and vaguely remember and trying to imitate what it was. Yeah. So here's this track. I, the track exists, and I don't know what its song is about, and I'm singing, mm, going to Graceland, Graceland, Memphis, Tennessee, I'm going to Graceland, and I'm thinking, well, of course, I'm not gonna sing that because it's not, a Graceland, it's not about Graceland or Elvis Presley or anything. So I'm gonna change that and get rid of that, and I can do that because I just have a track so I can Change the words anytime I want, but I can't. I keep singing that and keep singing that. So finally, I go, I say, I'm going to Graceland. I'm gonna go there and see what this is all about, you know, because I'd never been there even. <laughs> and as I'm driving up north on uh, Highway 61, I mean, the opening lines are literally in front of me. I'm driving through the Mississippi Delta and it just comes, it's just a description. The Mississippi Delta was shining like a national guitar. There are aspects of the creative process that you really don't understand. And that's you know, part of the great joy of it is because it's a mystery. You don't know why that jumped into your head, but it's not important. The thing about it is, is you say, ah, oh, yeah, I could use that, that's a good thing. And it justifies that I'm going to Graceland. I'm going to Graceland, right? That's, what's, that's where I'm going. Now the question is, so what's the song about? Okay, you got a good reason to go to Graceland. And the reason is the track sounds like it was cut at Sun Studios in Memphis. It's, to me, it sounds like it's a rockabilly track. Then the rest of it was, uh, it's just a description of being there, poor boys and pilgrims with families, and we were all going to, it's just everybody 
got on the bus and, you know, went to, went in. I didn't tell anybody that I was coming. I just bought a ticket and got on, a, got online and went with everybody else and walked through Graceland. 